The new campus of Gujarat Technological University is planned at Lake Wada, Gujarat. The 100-acre site is accessed by the proposed 24 meters and 12 meters of TP roads in the south and the north sides respectively. The site is located adjacent to the river Sabarmati. The university's vision is to make a world-class university. Furthermore, the university wants to develop a campus that is planned with respect to site topography and vegetation and which is green and sustainable with functionally efficient zoning, right building orientation, connected building groups, lush gardens and integrated infrastructure services. The 100-acre site overlooks the river Sabarmati and is around 310 meters by 900 meters in size. It is approached by the proposed TP roads on the either side. The site slopes gently towards the river Sabarmati on its western edge. There are many existing trees such as Neem, Karanj, Mahaneem, Goras Amli and Gando Bavar. A small creek also passes through the middle of the site and flows into the river. The master plan is based on placemaking and green design principles and proposes to conserve the natural areas and build around the site's unique features. The various zones are planned around these existing unique features, such as academic zone, residential zone and recreational zone. In order to have minimal site impact, these zones are connected together by a single central circulation spine that runs from the south to the north. The proposed buildings are designed with passive architectural design strategies. They are oriented as per green design guidelines, wherein the longer edges face north-south direction. The orientation shall cast deeper shadows in the courtyards that are formed between these buildings. Rooftop solar panels are proposed over all the buildings to generate power. About 20% of the open space shall be dedicated to cultivating food on site and shall accommodate orchards, fruit trees and crop raising. The proposed master plan responds to the site features through a variety of conservation and development strategies. These include efficient use of land, managing construction to reduce environmental damage, developing lush campus by afforestation and horticulture, passive urban design and architectural design strategies, reducing water import by harvesting rainwater, reducing energy import by cultivating solar energy. On-site preservations, conservation and design in accordance to sustainable principles are the key design drivers for the master plan and building design. Vast area of the site that is about more than 40% is left natural. More than 30% of the site area is left for future development beyond the naturally conserved area. Academic and administrative areas are located closer to the main entry from the newly proposed 24 meters wide TP road. The circulation and common amenities are centrally located within each building unit. More than 90% of the area is open and semi-open. Cafe and canteen are centrally located within the academic areas. Administrative zone along with student facilities, auditorium, library, exam hall, lecture hall, etc. are planned along the central main spine. Residential areas along with recreation, sports and community areas are planned towards the north side. A direct connectivity in form of shaded walkways are provided connecting the academic and residential areas. The academic zone has building blocks with doubly loaded green corridor. This circulation space has higher volume and visually connected bridges at various levels. This corridor space shall integrate landscape on ground as well as on the green walls.
building blocks are planned as groups. Each building unit has integral courtyard as its public space. These are integrated by means of bridges and walkways. The building blocks integrate passive architectural design strategies such as orientation, taking natural north light, blocking south sun by means of fins and solid walls on east-west direction to block the low sun. The master plan preserves the existing tree cover and proposes to increase them by 70% by planting native species that are drought resistant. The figure ground shows that less than 10% of the land is utilized for building construction. The built mass is scaled in such a way that the in-between courtyards shall remain shaded mostly throughout the year. About 50% of the energy required for the campus shall be generated on-site through renewable source in the form of solar panels proposed on the rooftop of each building. Percolating wells are proposed throughout the site, which shall help in recharging groundwater table and harvesting rainwater. Solid waste management facility has also been provided. Transportation design includes wide continuous shaded walkways, trails, bicycle tracks and collective transport modes in the form of shuttles. Parking lots are planned on either ends of the site to minimize vehicular movement within the site. Local drought-resistant plant species shall be planted. The entire master plan is planned in a phased manner to ease construction activity. The circulation is also minimized and is in the form of a single main central spine that connects the entire site. Each building is part of the same modular grid system, thus enabling ease of construction. This view shows various elements of the module. Locally available materials shall be used, which are long-lasting and require less maintenance. This sketch represents the character of the built and open spaces as to how they shall foster sense of belonging, create safe and flexible environment and merge indoor and outdoor spaces. We believe that this master plan and building designs shall truly result in a green and sustainable campus which shall be easy to maintain and reduce waste and carbon footprint over the period of time, making a world-class university campus. We believe that the campus design will be a benchmark for such similar campuses in the region.